Hello and welcome back YouTubers to another video with one half of the British Fist, me NJ. And this video I'm going to be sharing some of my talking points about the WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view of 2015. Starting off with the open after the pre-show, we have the Money in the Bank ladder match. And at first I thought, why are we having the concept of the pay-per-view as the opening match? Not the halfway point of the pay-per-view or the main event. The places where you're building up to the bigger matches. But then I thought, okay, Money in the Bank could be a fast-paced, entertaining match to kick the pay-per-view off. And that would have been all good and fine if I felt this match delivered that. Not saying it was a terrible Money in the Bank ladder match. I just didn't feel as excited about it. Maybe it was because of my feelings going into this pay-per-view, not really caring so much for it, thinking it was too close to the last pay-per-view, or maybe it's the wrestlers in this match were just thrown in there, while some of them were like fighting to earn to stay in this match. Maybe it was because there wasn't enough going on in this match. I don't know what it was. It could have been just a match itself. But there are some talking points that came out of it. Like we have the predictability of Roman Reigns going into this match to grab hold of the briefcase to possibly cash in later in the night or SummerSlam towards WrestleMania. But that was not the case. We had Bray Wyatt interfering to create a feud with Roman Reigns. As much as I did predict, that Bray Wyatt was to get involved in this match, I predicted him to go after Randy Orton. Because Roman Reigns looks like he's set for possible feuds between now, SummerSlam, SummerSlam and beyond. So to throw Bray Wyatt in here makes me feel that it's a filler feud. While Randy Orton, at this moment in time, really doesn't have any direction. While Roman Reigns had possibilities. But the other annoying thing about this. Is that do we really believe that the WWE are creating this possible bit of feud to put over Bray Wyatt. Is Bray Wyatt really going to get a win or two over Roman Reigns? I have to give it a chance to see what the WWE are going to do with it. But I'm sure it's to push Roman Reigns ready for the bigger match at SummerSlam. Then we have Neville. He was there but there's nothing memorable about what he did in the match. Kane felt like he was just there. Brandy Orton. He had his moments. He looked like he was going to win this match. We had... Kofi Kingston, he was pretty much there. He didn't really have his special spectacular ladder ring spots. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, it, it was nice to see him pop, being a possibility to win. But in the end, Sheamus picking up the win. That became a bit of a shocker. Yes, there was rumours when he first returned. That the WWE wanted to create him as a top heel for the company again. But his return hasn't really felt important or big enough to back that theory up. That's why I didn't really predict him winning this match. But the curveball to put Roman Reigns back a few steps from winning the championship is all good. Took away the predictability. And gave us something different. Sheamus really needs to now. Build his. Uh, credibility and. Heel like standard up. If he's going to be going after the WWE. World Heavyweight Championship. Next I'm going to talk about the John Cena and Kevin Owens match 2. I was really invested in this match. The feud great. This match. It gave us quality. 
This match gave us the moves. This gave us the, oh my god, ish moments. Because we thought John Cena could have picked up the win. Um, Kevin Owens, are they really going to do this to each other? They both really went at it and put on a really entertaining match. Would I say this was better than Extreme Rules? Possibly not, but it was definitely up there because they were trying to up the game a bit by kicking out of moves they may not have done so much in the match before. They knew each other's tactics in this match. This match delivered to be a great match. The things that spoilt it though was the finish. Either man could have won, which is what helped this match to be as great as it was. But when it comes to, yes, John Cena had to do uh, enough AAs to keep Kevin Owens down, but John Cena still picked up the win, possibly creating a third match at Battleground to face each other again. I don't see why, after the greatness they both put into this match, leaving us with the thought anyone could have won, why couldn't we have still gave the win to Kevin Owens? You know, and they didn't just stop there. They had John Cena win, and then they had him wanting to shake Kevin Owens' hand. Respect. You deserve to be here with the millions and millions. Yes, Kevin Owens proved that he's not taking any of John Cena's bullshit and beat him down and made it look like that Kevin Owens came out on top in the end. But in my eyes, he didn't lose anything from that match, apart from the match itself. But John Cena ended up just limping away. A limp is not really going to keep him off Raw or make us think, wow, Kevin Owens sure showed him. I'm, I'm glad Kevin Owens looked great in the match, but John Cena could have done so much more in the finale parts of the match. Just saying that. But great match. I'd watch it again, and I'd recommend you do too. Main event talking time. This was a fantastic match. These two, every time they're in the ring against each other, with each other, you can expect great spots, great moments, and great chemistry from these two. I enjoyed this match, no doubt about it. I felt that, in the end, Rollins or Dean Ambrose could have won. I felt that I would have been happy with either one of them. And given the winter Seth Rollins was good and all, but again, the way they did it, yes, there's the theory of the Dusty Rhodes or the Rhodes moments that happen in this match, the Dusty wins. But when you beat someone down, you beat them down to keep them down. In John Cena's line of work, not so much. But it got past to this match. And I'm sorry if you don't like what I'm about to say or agree with what I'm saying, but I'm not going to badmouth John Cena's actions and not when someone else does it. Seth Rollins beat Dean Ambrose down to a point where, okay, that's him down, that's him staying down, I'm going to win the match. It's not so Dean Ambrose gets beaten down and comes back and continues a little bit more than match to give us that. Oh, who's going to end up the winner kind of feeling. Yes, it's not happened before. But the beatdown should have given Seth Rollins the win. And Ambrose could have taken the loss that way. Other than that, which I'm a bit conflicted about. Because, yes, it's in Dean Ambrose's kind of character. To be crazy and just keep putting his body through it all. But I just didn't believe in that. Just like I don't believe when John Cena does it. But overall, the Moan the Bank ladder match for the briefcase. I'm glad Roman Reigns didn't win. Even though Roman Reigns is possibly going to pick up 
a way to get the championship later this year. John Cena defeat Owens. Didn't really agree with the result, but I liked the match. The main event, I liked that Seth Rollins won, but didn't fully agree with how it was done. But people, please share your thoughts on these three matches in the comment section below. And I've been NJ, your host of this video. Please tune in for the future videos. I'll possibly start to bring up more talking points for later shows in the future. But till next time, please keep smiling, cashing in your checks, and goodbye.